Hi, this is Jason Rohr. I'm an independent game designer, and over the past 15 years, I've designed and programmed 19 games. This brief video will show you how to play my new chess poker hybrid game, Choker. My goal with this project was to design the simplest possible game that involved all aspects of both chess and poker. I wanted a game where players' existing chess and poker skills were valuable in equal measure, and I didn't want to pile on a bunch of additional rules and systems for people to learn. Is a truly elegant chess poker hybrid possible? I think that I've discovered one. To play Choker, you need a standard chess board set up in the usual way. You also need a standard deck of 52 cards. All standard chess rules apply and players take turns making moves as they usually do. The only special rule comes into play during a capture. The two involved pieces remain on the board and the capturing piece lays down to serve as the big blind for a standard hand of Texas Hold'em. The owner of the target piece gets the dealer button. The deck is shuffled and each player is dealt two cards. Action is on the dealer, who may now fold, call, or raise. If the dealer folds, the capture takes place as it would in a normal chess game, and play continues from there. And that's an interesting aspect of this design. Every ordinary chess game is actually a special case of a choker game, a choker game where both players always fold. But things get more interesting if the dealer decides to call or raise in response to this capture. Calling requires that the dealer lays down one of their own pieces that matches the value of the capturing piece. In other words, they must match the big blind. In this case, white would have to lay down one of its knights to call. But white doesn't have to stop there. Let's take a look at white's hand. That's a strong heads-up hand. White is likely ahead of black, and white can raise by laying down any number of additional pieces. Let's say white calls the knight and raises two more pawns. Now the action passes to black, who can fold, call, or raise again. Let's say black calls. So now the pot is good and we're ready to see the flop. This is not a great flop for white, but black is first to act. Black can bet by laying down additional pieces or check. Let's say black makes a small out of position bet here. Action now passes back to white, who can fold, call, or raise. To call, white would have to lay down another pawn. It's a pretty weak bet, and maybe white smells a trap. Let's say white loses their nerve and folds instead. What happens then? Well, white loses the hand, and the pot goes to black, which means that all of white's pieces that were in the pot are taken off the board, including the target pawn from the original capture. Suppose that black foolishly flashes their cards before mucking. You can see that white made a good read here, and cut their losses substantially. If white hadn't folded, though, the players would be able to place additional bets on additional poker streets, and eventually reach showdown. Let's rewind time and see what would have happened. Suppose that white hit a monster by the river, but black was trying to trap with checks from out of position, so no more pieces were committed until the river. Let's say that white bets a rook, a substantial bet, and black calls. White wins the showdown, meaning that all of black's committed pieces, including the original capturing knight, are removed from the board. That's right, the target pawn from black's original capture survives the capture, and the knight is removed instead. So that's the essential design of Choker. We resolve captures by playing a poker hand, and we bet with additional pieces from the board. All you have to remember is that the capturing piece is the big blind, a bet that you're making before you even get to see your own cards. It makes sense that, in order to reverse the outcome of this otherwise natural chess capture, the defending player would need to put a piece of equal value on the line. You can also remember that the value of the target piece in the capture is irrelevant to the blind size, because in an ordinary chess game, it would be dead and buried already. So that's it for the core design. It's pretty simple but I still need to explain one special case. What happens if you need to call a bet, but you don't have the matching pieces? In this case, the big blind is black's bishop, but white doesn't have a bishop to call with. If you're in this situation, you can call the bet by laying down a piece of the next available lower value. So black doesn't have to lay down a rook, but instead can lay down a pawn. What about a case where you have no lower valued pieces? How can you call then? In that situation, to call a bet, you must lay down a higher valued piece of your choice. In this case, if white wants to call instead of folding, they must lay down a rook or a queen. I said before that choker becomes a normal chess game if both players always fold in response to a capture. A highly skilled chess player might be tempted to play that way. However, that strategy is dominated by a player who raises in good spots from the small blind in response to capture attempts, thus leveraging good poker situations to remove even more of their opponent's pieces than they otherwise would. As a result, only players who give both aspects of the game equal attention will win in the long run. That's everything you need to know about my new game, Choker. Thanks for watching.